All right, I'd like to talk a little bit about Project 5, ELC 343 Project 5. Uh, this involves data conversion using the analog to digital converter and the digital to analog converter on the PSOC chip. Um, please read the lab handout. And um, I'll mention a couple things actually from the handout as we uh, walk through the code that are the example that I've done. Um, first, the schematic. Um, you're going to have an SAR type analog to digital converter. That's a um, successive approximation register. Uh, it's a very popular type of converter that's a good blend of uh, performance in terms of um, conversion speed. So it's high conversion speed and also pretty high precision. It's not the highest precision, it's not the highest speed, but it's a good uh, intermediate trade off actually. It gives you pretty good um, uh, performance in both of those uh, avenues in, in both uh, areas. So let's see if we look at how we've configured that. The, um, the A to D converter. Um, I have it set for a conversion rate of 100,000 per second. Um, I have the input range going from VSSA to VDDA. VSSA is the analog ground. VDDA is the analog supply voltage. The supply voltage might be 5 volts, it might be 3.3 volts, and you need to figure out which it is in order to uh, actually correctly do the part of the project that uh, involves converting a code from the analog to digital converter to millivolts. So you need to know what your VDD is in your case. Um, I'm using the internal VREF bypass. And in order to use the bypass, you will need to run um, uh, the bypass pin appropriate. I'll tell you in a second how you do that. Um, for sampling mode, you'll use the software trigger, which means you have to use a subroutine that starts the converter for each conversion. Um, and uh, the clock source is internal. So I think that's all we need to see about that. The digital analog converter, I'd recommend using the 0 to 1.02 volt range, not the 0 to 4.08 volt range. Um, the larger range can be convenient, although it will only be uh, possible um, when the supply voltage is 5 volts. You're welcome to use it if you like. It's fine, but you'd have to use it and ensure that your supply voltage was 5 volts. Uh, and I think that's all I want to say about that. Yeah, otherwise, I think all the rest of these settings are defaults. And if we look at the code, um, some things you have to call start on the A to D, the D to A, and the LCD. Um, for your conversion, you call start convert, and then you call is end conversion. You pass it a parameter. You can either pass it a parameter, um, and I'm going to go to the declarations here. You can either pass wait for result, which means that it blocks. When you call that is end convert, it blocks until the result is ready. Or you can just say return status, in which case it returns immediately and it tells you whether or not it's end of convert. And then you have to call it repeatedly. So that allows you to do other things while you're waiting for a conversion. In this case, we have nothing else to do. So I'm just gonna call wait for result, which lets me just make this call and it sits there and it waits until the conversion is done. Uh, then I can get the result um, and I use uh, sprintf like we've done before to get a formatted value and so forth. And you can, um, uh, and then, then I also want you to pass that value to the D to A converter. So let's take a look at how that uh, looks. Um, we have our formatted output and um, we've wired things so that the uh, center tap of the analog of the potentiometer goes to the A to D converter. And you can see I'm reading out, I'm twisting the potentiometer now, and I read the code goes from 0 to 4095. It's a 12 bit uh, A to D converter. So it's nice that I can go full scale. And um, in hexadecimal, that maps from 000 to FFF, in decimal 0 to 4095. And then it maps, uh, as shown, to millivolts. Um, uh, that's, I guess, that's the main thing I want to say. But uh, one other thing to mention is that I do want you to measure the voltage at, so when you take these measurements, I want you to take measurements at various settings of the A to D. You're gonna set the A to D to different values. And I want you to measure the voltage at the center tap. So you're gonna put your multimeter right on the center electrode of the A to D, of the potentiometer, sorry, which is the same um, as the A to D converter, but this will be a convenient place to get it. So put your probe right here. You'll be able to measure that voltage. Um, 
And I also want you to measure the voltage at the output of the D to A converter, and you're going to do some plots that uh, translate the voltage in to the code read from the A to D converter, and then you're going to infer from the code of the A to D converter, you're going to convert that or scale that appropriately to pass to the D to A converter. The A to D is a 12-bit device. The D to A is an 8-bit device. So you're going to have to do a shifting to make that work out. And um, from this hex value, uh, it actually becomes fairly easy with shifting to figure out what value is going to the D to A converter. And from that, you can figure out um, what the uh, what you would expect the theoretical voltage to be at the output of the D to A converter. And you can plot output voltage versus input code to the D to A converter. So I want you to make two plots. One plot, which is the A to D code value as a function of the input voltage and the D to A, what is the output function as a output voltage as a function of the input code. Um, and of course, so you're gonna be measuring the output voltage at the pin that you designate for the D to A converter. All right, I think that's all I've got. So uh, good luck with this one and uh, I'll end it here.